Welcome back to the Namdong Stadium. I'm Colin Turner and along beside me is Richard Freeman. And uh, we're taking a look at the action from that first half for Japan and Korea. Richard, it was an exciting first half. Mistakes by the uh, Japanese, but uh, that's what happens in rugby. Great, uh, great vision from him to see the opportunities. Well, exactly, but I mean, the, the mistakes also have come from some superb defence by the Koreans. They've been up so quickly. Goro Mabu here scored a penalty. Chihito Matsu Matsui marked his debut with a try. Uh, Hayden Hopgood also scored a try to give Japan a lead, but a two point lead is something that not many people would have predicted. And then, of course, they got a penalty try towards the end of that, that first half. They they're, they're slowly playing themselves back into the game, but the Koreans are absolutely outstanding in defence. I mean, they made 46 tackles. I don't think they missed one at all. 49 tackles, I'm sorry. I don't think they missed one at all. And what about the uh, the scrums? Look at that. Uh, pretty even, you'd say, six to three. Yeah, the scrums, six to scrums. Oh, that shows how many handling errors that Japan have made. They've been under so much pressure. Luke Thompson forced a pass. Uh, Kane Heskerling dropped one early on as well. And again, that's the pressure from the Koreans. And I just think in the second half, Eddie Jones may have told them to maybe play a little bit deeper because the Koreans are coming up very quickly off their line. They're making the tackles and the Japan players seem rattled a little bit. Yeah, and the turnovers won there as well. Well, the turnovers won. That's Japan have three. That's obviously down to their experience at the breakdown and that's something they'll need to work on because as the Koreans realized yesterday, you know, Japan are so good at scoring off turnover ball. That's something that, you know, looking ahead to the World Cup, if, if you're honest, that's how Japan are going to score against the likes of South Africa and Scotland. And so the second half, I think Eddie will be looking at trying to force the turnovers and then launch counter-attacks and use their pace and fitness. Yeah, and you see the uh, Japanese team uh, coming back out and the uh, Korean team already out there, just uh, looking down there to see if there's uh, any changes in uh, both sides. It seems the uh, Koreans uh, would have been uh, pretty happy. Uh, Chung Yong Suk, the uh, coach, would have been pretty happy with that uh, first uh, 40 minutes. I think so. I mean, he'd be definitely very happy with the first 25, 30 minutes. Mm. Towards the last 10 minutes of the second half, obviously, things didn't go quite as well. Japan sort of played themselves back into it. A reverse, really, of the last two times that we've been here, where it was the Japan that went off and won the game by half-time, and then the Koreans actually played some decent rugby in the second half. So it'll be interesting to see how Japan play the second half. Um, they've got a new interpreter. He's a death metal singer, and I think he'll be used to some of the words that Eddie Jones probably <laughs> used at half-time, because I can't imagine that it was um, the quietest of team talks down there. Exactly, and a uh, few words, I'm sure, from uh, Chung Hyung Suk to say to the guys, OK, go back out and do it all again. And uh, they will be uh, very, very happy with the uh, scoreline as they look at the uh, board away to our uh, left. And it's saying Korea 20, Japan 22. And a lot of people would have uh, thought uh, coming into this game that uh, Japan might have scored 20 when the full game was over, not at half time. Yeah, I mean, as I say, it's a score that surprised a lot of people. I mean, the Koreans are playing though with so much passion. I mean, the tackling, as I say, it's just been unbelievable. They've stopped Japan in their tracks. I mean, Kaon Hesketh has got over the gain line a couple of times, but the, the, the speed and midfield of the defence is what's preventing Japan from getting the ball wide. And, and as a result, Fujitu and Matsui really have been starved of opportunities to show how quick they are. Yeah, and I, I, I like uh, Kim Sung Soo, the uh, captain of the uh, Korean side, talking to Ji Jal Bin there, uh, encouraging the youngster as we uh, start the uh, second half. And it's the uh, Koreans, for those of you who have just joined us, who are playing from left to right on your screen. They're in the all white as uh, Japan are able to uh, collect the ball and take it in and they're able to uh, move forward they can rotate it again get it out the back and now they can they get it out to Fujitu and they can and he's going to race down the line but he's going to be tackled tackled and taken out of it by Tumaru and uh, also there with him was uh, Namuk ball is back in again blast on the whistle from Tim Baker and uh, gives the uh, free kick to Japan they're able to uh, take it away quickly through their number 10 and that is uh, Tatikawa out to Kizu. This is where they need to go right. They've got numbers out wide right. The long pass. 
They, they can get it on time. If I say about that, they are running the ball. We said the uh, number one there in the county, but they can take it back again. This time it goes to Justin Ives. He's taken to ground. Uh, Iwasa has it. He's able to uh, get the uh, Japanese into a good position. They can come uh, to the uh, left that time, but the uh, poor pass went behind everyone. And it is uh, Fujita who went in there try to uh, correct the uh, problem for the Japanese. They have it again. Now they go into the uh, middle to uh, Shoji Ito. He's taken the ground. There's one of the uh, Korean players down injured in the uh, background. Got a, a bad tackle. A couple of uh, trainers and assistants have come on to help him out. Meanwhile, the Japanese go forward. So on the far side, the uh, Koreans lost the tackle and now the uh, Japanese player loses the uh, the ball, and that uh, flew out of the hands of Heskett. It did. A bit of a better start from Japan. They got the ball wide. Fujita made the break down the left-hand flank. But again, it's just sloppy passing at times. Tamura just threw a pass to no one in midfield. And then Heskett showing his strength, but then losing the ball in the tackle. Two players, a Korean player down injured, and also the uh, number seven for the uh, Japanese team. That's uh, Hayden Hopkins, the 34-year-old uh, <coughs> side flanker. And the referee is just asking the officials to uh, hold up everything at the moment until we uh, sort out the uh, injured player, the number four for Korea, Kim Woo Bum, the 25-year-old from. Kubota team. He's six foot six. See him go into the uh, lineup, but uh, meanwhile, still concerned over on the, this side of the ground for one of the Korean players. Unfortunately, not easy to identify in the. Uh, yeah, never a nice thing to see a player like that. He hasn't really moved an awful lot, so obviously a cause for concern. Exactly, and they're. Uh, I think they're getting ready to, uh, yeah, they're going to make a substitution and I think it, it will be uh, Na Kwang Yong who will come in, the number 19. Yeah, Lee uh, Yong Sung, who's yeah. one of the reserves, is the man down. Um, he's slowly getting to his feet, but uh, he is very, very groggy and uh, Hopefully they'll do all the right checks for concussion. Very serious issue now for rugby, and obviously doctor will have a look at him and, and give him a test. But uh, I don't think there's any way he should be allowed back on. He looks very groggy indeed. Yeah, it's uh, Hang uh, In Jo who has gone in. Actually, the 28-year-old wearing the uh, number 19. He's, uh, he's gone into the fray. Hang In Jo. So just uh, getting the guys together. Uh, getting ready to go into the uh, scrum. So they go down again. Scrum, the new man in the scrum is, wasn't quite organized and Japan get a free kick and I'm, yes they're going to go for a scrum again by decision there from Takayama. And interesting, uh, I just watched uh, down underneath us here and uh, the uh, man on this side, uh, Ujita, raced out to the uh, touchline which is about uh, maybe 100 meters away from where the ball action is. And he was uh, looking for a long kick across because there's no cover by the uh, Koreans on this side. There's uh, two uh, players uh, in by the, uh, the uprights. And uh, those two players, uh, Wang Min and Namuk. So they now settle themselves into the scrum. Hang in Joe in that scrum. The uh, Koreans are going to lose out. The uh, Japanese are keeping the ball at the, uh, the back. They're able to pick it up. Now they've got a wide open chance here. And there's a breakthrough in the middle. And the uh, Japanese rotate it. They got three and three. They were going to go to the left. And uh, it's Hawasha. And, uh, and he was held up. 
Russell is back in there for Richie Farrell. He got off the ground. He's able to uh, put it out, and he put it out to uh, Olani. Now they come out to uh, Kizu. They get it again. They go to their uh, man wide on the outside, uh, Tatikawa. He's blocked. Now they've got to go back into the middle again. That is uh, Hatikeyama, a chance for the Japanese to take it forward again. There are two meters out from the line. Can they get it? They've got a big line out waiting for it. And they miss out a whole lot of players. And they miss out the player as well that it was intended for. And the Koreans are able to clear it out to the halfway line. Good ball outside. Here's a chance this time. It is for Heskett and Matsui and Matsui ball flanked out to the uh, far side but uh, Matsui was the uh, was the uh, runner and it is uh, Heskett eventually I think they threw it out and it's a try for the uh, Japanese good start for them in the uh, second half well recovered by the the Japan back three because Yutamuro is one of those players that he has the X factor and sometimes his uh, teammates don't know what he's doing. I think his hands didn't know what his brain was doing then because he threw it to nobody. The Japan back three recovered very well and then Hesketh showed just why he's in the Japan team. I mean, as I say, he's an enigma of a player. He's not particularly quick, but he's so strong. He has a very low center of gravity, which means he's very difficult to tackle. And he just used his strength there to go yeah, over in the corner. Yeah, and, but uh, I like the word the run from uh, the man on the outside as well, because he distracted two players, because everyone now realizes he's a bit of a speedster. So yeah. Matsui was the, was the blind man who took two players out. Yep, clever playing, and I mean, as I say, that's what Japan have to do. They have to create mismatches, they have to create problems with the opposition defence, cause the opposition defence to think. And um, a good start for Japan. The Korea haven't been helped. They've made a number of changes at half time, and now they've made another a couple more changes in the front row, it seems. Um, and you have to question, you know, obviously these guys don't play at the level of top league all the time. There's about five players playing in Japan, most for the second division. So, you know, fitness and strength is going to come to the fore. And, and that's where you would think Japan will start to run away with the game. But these Koreans have been playing well so far. They're inspired the uh, Koreans to Kisu and the Japanese starting to get on top, starting to uh, even though they lost the ball that time, true, not good. And the uh, Koreans get it back this time, true. Jigal Bin, the number 14, he leaves it behind. Going in with the uh, top was the uh, number 23, and that is uh, Park Han Yul. And the uh, penalty awarded by our referee, Tim Baker from Hong Kong. And, uh, what are they going to do? He's going to have a shot at goal. The shot is going to come from the... <coughs> change. They're going to back to uh, Po Hyung Hyung. For a while at the scrum half one, that is. Now they can get the T. Another player. Po Hyung Hyung going to have a shot at goal. And he's, what, 27 meters out? 28. I think 27, 28 meters looks like his earlier effort with the seven iron is probably about the same, although he might be hitting it into the wind, so uh, possibly a six iron today. <laughs> Just checking across the, uh, the line out for the, uh, the line up for the uh, Koreans. They have, as you say, uh, made a couple of changes. They brought in uh, Hang In Ju came in and uh, Park Hang Yul. Park Hang Yul. Side. He wears the number 23. Here's the shot. Goal has got to come around. Oh, it's coming around just inside the upright. Good kick. He's a very classy kicker. Lee Smith said yesterday that the Koreans could hold on to the ball and just concentrated on getting points by kicking the points every so often. They'd be in the game, and that's what's happening today. Oh, hasn't missed a kick. He strokes it very well. Never looked like missing. 27-23. So even though the Japanese got a good start with that uh, try from the Heskett, a couple of points pulled back by the uh, Koreans. Here's the 
restart. The Korean player taken in the air, that was Jing Bin. The young Koreans have it through their number 12, Kim Nam Muk. They get it out the, uh, the back. This time they go to their number 18, and the number 18 is Shin Dong Wan. Taken with such good tackle by Fujita. And Fujita is able to take out the uh, number 23. Good tackle by Fujita. He's been getting a lot of work actually from a former rugby league player, Max Mannix, who's uh, been up in Japan for a few years. And, making his name now as a film producer uh, and film writer, but Max has been with the Japan squad, he was with Suntory earlier, and uh, he's helping Fujita on his defensive work, and it paid off there, a good cover tackle by the wing. Good throw in, line out of the uh, Lions person on this side. from Sydney and Australia. Steve Kaufman says it was a stretch, so they're going to scrum it down, even though it was uh, nicely collected by uh, Justin Eyes wearing the number six and that uh, big headband. Recently became a Japan citizen, Justin Ives, so we'll be seeing slowly soon what his uh, Japanese character will, he will add to his name. Blind side flanker playing in that position today. And this time the referee comes over to Akami. Masataka Mikami, the 26-year-old, plays with the Toshiba Club in Japan. Earns his 23rd cap today. And the Koreans have a chance of putting it into the scrum. Lee Myung Jung. And there, down they go, and the uh, penalty is against the uh, Koreans. And uh, who is he pointing to? He's uh, pointing to the number 16, I think it is, and that's uh, Na Kwan Yung. So it's going to give uh, Goromaru a chance. What's he going to do? Kick into the corner. He thought he was going to go for a goal. He's going to kick into the uh, corner. Put some pressure on the uh, Koreans. I think a right, uh, the right attitude, Rich. I think so, yeah. I mean, the second half is all about Japan trying to get their game plan going. Uh, he's talked about the fact that they need to have a couple of game plans going into the World Cup. They're going to vary things up, so we'll see what type of game they play in the second half. Just inside the Korean 22. In there goes the uh, captain, the Kiyama, wearing the number three. And they can rotate it. They got a man over on the outside, but they can't get it across. But a good piece of sidestepping by uh, Fujita. Fujita playing all over the park at the moment. They get it out again to uh, Ives. Where the number seven is Hayden Hopgood. Oh, nice ball inside, lovely ball inside. And it is the uh, number 11. Now, he was thinking it wouldn't be too long before Fujita got into the uh, scoring. And uh, he certainly has Fujita getting that one. Nice pass inside by uh, Tatikawa. And uh, Fujita gets over the uh, try line. It's good to see Fujita coming off his wing as often as he is now. I mean, he is a talent. Um, Maybe not quite as good as some of the, the journalists in Japan are playing him up to be because he hasn't actually played a top league game yet. He was a high school star, he's a university star, but obviously there's a big step up to test match level. Um, but he's starting to prove himself that he is a hard worker, which is what you have to be at test match level, especially as a wing. He's coming off his wing, scoring a good try there and, and well deserved. And Garamaru with the uh, conversion. And that one, he has missed pushed it wide so the uh, score remains Japan 32 Korea 23 not a good sign for Japan when uh, Goromaru starts missing kicks I mean there are other kickers out there Tamura can kick Tatakawa can kick the problem with, with Goromaru is he's only the only real fullback in the squad 
and obviously when you start thinking about playing games like Samoa, Scotland, where one kick could decide the game, you've got to make sure your kicker's in, in top form, and uh, unfortunately for Japan today, Gorumaru, is, uh, the radar's not quite working at the moment. I can tell you that uh, Hiroki Yahara, the 31-year-old, plays with the Toshiba Club, winning his uh, 18 cap has gone into the uh, lying out for the Japanese team. So he's going to the 173 meter of 5'8". Tanan is 16 stone in weight as the Japanese tried to bring it down this side into the tackle. Went Heskett, they can rotate it again, goes across to Tatikawa. Again, there's only a couple of Koreans there to stop them and the uh, Japanese are swarming around. Kick, but it's blocked down, charged down, and it goes back to uh, Fujita. He loses control of that ball, lost forward, and uh, the handout from uh, Tim Baker. And uh, he's going to award the uh, scrum to the Koreans. Bit of mishandling there by Fujita on the ground. And a kick charge down. As I say, a lot of this is Japan are playing so flat that they're giving the Koreans a chance to get up quickly. And then Tatakawa has his kick charge down there. I just can't help thinking that possibly they could play a little bit deeper in the second half and just try and get the confidence going, get the combinations going, and take the Korean defense out of the game. Yeah, and there's a Korean player down still on the ground, even though he's hidden from our view right behind the uh, Japanese uh, group of players there on the right-hand side. As we're looking at uh, the man who has kicked and <coughs> missed that last penalty, he kicked a few of them. That was uh, Goromaru. And uh, there's the Korean player on the ground. And uh, in the meantime, the uh, Korean training staff have all run on and they given out water. It's uh, Kim Ho-bong. Six foot six tall, 25 year old. He's limping. Looks as if uh, he's got a knock on his uh, left leg, but he's gone back into the action. Interesting move for Japan because Tatakawa is coming off and uh, former captain Toshiaki Hirose is coming on. Spent most of his career on the wing, although he started as a fly half and he looks to have slotted in at fly half now. So maybe there's some words from the bench about how to play this remaining sort of 20 minutes or so. Well, there's a breakthrough by the uh, Koreans as they uh, race into uh, enemy territory, so to speak. They got over the advantage line as well. They can uh, knock it forward and then can they move it quickly? They do, out the back. It goes to uh, Oi. And then they go very, very wide, way out to the uh, far side to Jingal Bin, another speedster in the uh, Korean side. They get it back again, try to get over the advantage line. They're held up. The uh, man holding them up is Ito. Shoji Ito, but the Koreans have it, hand out from the Tim Baker, and he's uh, awarding a penalty to the Japanese side, and I would think uh, he's going to penalize that uh, last man up for the uh, Koreans, or is it scrum? He's going to call it scrum. It was uh, Kim Ho Young Su was the last man up, Kim Young Su. Just over halfway, just about halfway in the uh, second half. And the Japanese lead by 32 points to uh, 23. Yeah, the Japanese backs looking very flat here. We wouldn't be surprised if it goes to Gorumaru on the blind side now. He might have a run, he might just decide to use this breeze and, and kick it downfield. And again, the uh, Koreans are penalized in the scrum. And the uh, Japanese can come away with it. At that time, it was the uh, number 23 for the Japanese. And then they can get it out this side to Fujita. And then uh, Fujita recycles it again across. Very flat ball again by the uh, Japanese. Taken in, but they get it again. And you can see there the number eight leaning across. Kong Jung was trying to steal that ball away from the uh, Japanese, but they've got it again. 
which way are they going to go? They got to go to the uh, far side. They went to Hiroz. And the Japanese putting on the pressure inside to uh, Akami. The Japanese can move it this time. They come over on the side to Chida. Well, all the crowd were telling the referee that there was a, a foul committed. And, uh, the Japanese uh, brought their number seven, Aiden Hopkins, back into the action. The uh, that came out by uh, Aiden Hopkins was uh, tested. Or I think that's a great invention for the uh, the rugby people to have this uh, testing done for a uh, concussion yeah certainly it has to be done the welfare of the player is most important it's not often done sadly at top league level but uh, obviously at international level it's something that has to be done yep. but, uh, again right. Japan moving backwards they like being forced backwards by the Korean defense and, and sort of left with no answers as to what to do it's all throwing the ball around and just hoping it reaches a player there's no real structure to the Japan play at the moment Korea to put the ball in, but they're being pushed off the ball, but they still retain it through their number eight, Kong Kyu. The last on the referee's whistle is saying that the uh, tackler moved the ball forward, knocked on. So the uh, Koreans can uh, clear. Just looking down at Murata, who's the uh, man. There's all the uh, graphics for you telling you uh, how many scrums and lineouts, 10 against 5. What do you think of all of that? Uh, it just shows the handling errors that Japan are making. I mean, 10, 10 scrums to the Koreans all come from handling errors by Japan. And yet the Koreans have obviously been con uh, conceding a lot of penalties, 12 to 4, but uh, Japan not really making the most of it. And of course, the important line is at the bottom there, as you see on your screen. Korea 23, Japan 32, line out this side. That one's gone astray from the Koreans. The Japanese had a hand out. A big tall man, Justin Ives, had his hand out. And also, there was uh, Aiden Hopgood. But the ball out forward. It's going to be a scrum to Japan. It's still a bit bitty, isn't it, Rich? You know, the performance from the Japanese side. Not good at all, to be honest. I mean, I know they're rusty, they've trained hard in camp, obviously they haven't played a great deal of rugby. But then the same for the Korean side, and yet they've come out, put the Japan team under pressure. And as I say, you know, Eddie will sit there and say it's all about the World Cup, but you've got to have some good performances along the way. I mean, if Japan learn from this and learn how to react, all all well and good, but uh, just at the moment they just don't seem to have varied their game plan at all and uh, they're, they're being made to struggle a little bit by the Koreans. Shin Dong Wan getting a bit of a, a talking to from our uh, referee for illegal barging in the scrum. I think he's also, he's a fluent English speaker having been brought up in New Zealand so he's obviously helping the referee and translating to his Korean teammates as well. <laughs> Maybe, yes, that's what he was telling him. Go back and tell your front row to straighten themselves out. Good ball collected by the uh, Japanese, and they uh, take it forward. And there's a chance for them to uh, run forward. Heskett. And, uh, Japanese have it right under the goal post. Can they move it quickly? They've got a big overlap on the far side. They've got about five against three, and they go wide. Nice ball inside, and uh, there's uh, not a lot of people going to stop that man when he gets the uh, ball in his hand. And, uh, that's a, a try right in the uh, corner for uh, Japan again. Yusamura yeah, going over in the corner, but marks that down once again to Khan Hesketh. The great run in the midfield by Khan Hesketh created, and then the inside pass, and Tamura goes over in the corner. Tamura, good try for the Japanese, so they are stretching it out a little bit. They are, as, as you know, you would expect them to to do a bit better in the second half than they did in the first half. Um, but it 
it's still not been the most fluid of performances. I mean, there's been some little bits that have been good, but uh, there's a lot of work to do, I think, ahead. Now, should I put the uh, commentator's curse on Kuramaru like I did with the last kick and say it's easy for him and then he missed? As far as the uh, Japanese are concerned, meanwhile, they have uh, introduced Yamashita. 29 year old has come into the uh, side and there's a kick and again I didn't say anything that time but, uh, it still went a little bit uh, so the Japanese have stretched their lead out to uh, 37 points to uh, 23 you see that kick there in slow motion it just misses it just, just hasn't got the radar correct and he looks, and you can see the eyes were staring at him. I just get the feeling that I know, I know Eddie has said the same thing. I mean, they have been working very hard on their fitness and strength, but perhaps they haven't been working on their skills quite as much because Goromao has been missing some kicks, passes and not going to hand. It's the rugby that's letting them down at the moment, not really their fitness or strength. The basics, yeah. as Eddie would say, the basics left us down. Across there, Iwasa. The Koreans uh, have to change direction, and that's uh, Sho Wong, Jack Sho Wong, the 24 year old. They keep it going over to the far side, and they move it to uh, Kim Nam. Uh, oh, they've got to come back, change direction. They go inside to the number 17. That is Young. Young King. It's coming back slowly on the uh, Korean side. And they move it right into the uh, middle. This is Shin Dong Wang. Your friend Shin Dong Wang taking the ground in. They're rich. Yeah, he's about to go to Germany to start university, study again after seven years in Japan. So, uh, maybe another language he picks up, fluent English speaker, Korean speaker, speaks pretty good Japanese. Spent a lot of time in New Zealand, yeah. Yeah, he was brought up in uh, Christchurch alongside Kosei Ono, who obviously is missing from the Japan team today. He's just having a neck operation, which is one of the reasons uh, Ryohei Yamanaka was brought into the squad. This is Hang Young, Mark Hang Young. Japan side is Hiroshi Kamishita. Kamishita wears the number 18. Good line out throw from the Koreans. Stop, but can they keep it keep it going? They're getting a lot of support from the back. But instead of going forward, they're going sideways, but they still have the ball. They're retaining possession. It's still at the back for them. They pick it up, they try to barge over. Ball developing. They can get it out of there. They still retain it, but they need uh, a bit of support. But they got a big, big wide flank on this outside they go to uh, kim ho bum number four he's got to ground inside to shin dang one he's the kai young the number 16 he's taking the ground here's the big number seven racing true Sung Wan is there. Now they have a chance. They can get it out to this side, but they uh, brought a whole lot of the uh, Japanese defense across. And the 
passed on the whistle. The referee gives a free kick quickly to the Koreans. They go to Kim Ho Bung. He can get through. Blocked. This time they change direction and they go wide. They got an overlap. But that's a good piece of sidestepping. That's a good try. That is a great try. He's avoided one or two good tackles that went in. Good try. Oh, good reward for the Koreans. A good effort by the forwards. They put the Japan pack under a lot of pressure, which is obviously a worry. Freddie Jones, bearing in mind the bigger packs they'll be playing later in the year, but the Korean pack did well. Then Lee suddenly changed direction, and uh, Kim Nanook did very well. He, the runner came up probably a bit too quickly in defence. He sidestepped him and then took three Japan players over with him under the post. So uh, here we see just off step off the left foot, beat two tacklers there, and then took three men over with him. So a very good try by the Korean inside centre. Yeah, he showed a lot of people. Converted. So it takes the score up to 37 for Japan, 28 for Korea. That was a very good try. He showed a lot of power, a lot of skill, sidestepping. And clever play by the scrum half because he had seen the forwards go time and time again. Japan defense had held the pack. And then suddenly Lee switched, up, switched direction. Yeah, I think it was a really well to score. So a very well deserved try for, for the Koreans. And I think uh, a lot of credit goes to the uh, captain, uh, Kim Sung Yu, as well, because he went across to that side and added uh, another player, dragged another player with him. So there was five against three on yeah, that side. Exactly, yeah. Yep. So Kim Nam Muk. That's his name on the score sheet when he's uh, making his uh, 12th appearance. A 25 year old plays for the Kepco Club. And now the Japanese make another change, and this time they have brought on Hiroshima, a 32 year old from the Kobe Kepco Club. He wears the number 16. Thompson. Just short of the line, they can rotate it, but they got three over there. Who is it going to be? And it goes out to Hayden Hopgood. And the uh, number seven goes over on the uh, far side. So the big man, Hayden Hopgood, as uh, Rich mentioned, hasn't played a lot of uh, international or senior rugby in the last couple of years. Yeah, good try by Hopgood, made by a break by Luke Thompson. I thought the big guy was going to be in to mark his 50th cap, but. Uh, to have quite the legs of old and uh, the ball goes wide, Hopgood goes unopposed. And a, a, an important try for Japan because Korea are just one score away from picking up a bonus point, which in the context of the tournament could be very important as to who finishes, as we would normally assume, second or third. I don't think Japan have actually given away a bonus point aside from one loss to Hong Kong many years ago in Tokyo. So. Um, that just shows how well the Koreans have played today, and obviously they'll gain a lot of confidence from this. Um, there's still eight minutes to go, so who knows? They could come back, get a try, and, and a very deserved bonus point. I'm just looking down, and uh, Eddie Jones has made another change. Uh, Kasuki Uchida, 23-year-old from the Panasonic Club, has been brought into the ranks. As the uh, conversion is completed, Japan out to uh, 42 points. To, uh, 42 points to 30. To go. As I say, the Koreans will be desperate for that extra try. Japan will be looking to finish with a bit of a flourish because it hasn't been a great performance. Just trying to uh, sort out the lineup for Japan. Yeah, Tamura might be the one that's uh, gone missing, and uh, they have allowed uh, Hiroshi to come in and Uchida to come in in the uh, back line. 
discussion going on amongst the uh, the guys and the chance for the Japanese to put the ball in the uh, scrum. Eric Schiller has been the backup to Fumiyaki Tanaka last season at Panasonic Wild Knights. Again, he hasn't had a great deal of playing time and uh, I'm not sure how he's played with Hiroshi as his uh, outside half. So Hiroshi puts the uh, ball in. Uh, 34 year old. And, uh, the winner at the back and they can uh, clean it out again, but uh, they go down the far side. Uh, Naru gets into the line. And he's taken over the uh, sideline. And the referee is going to uh, pull them all back. And he's going to give a penalty to the Japanese team and they throw the ball to their number 22, Shida. Left foot. It's the first left foot of the Japanese team today. I haven't seen anyone kick with the left foot. Yeah, no, yeah, Yamanaka's got a good strong left foot. Uh, interesting character. He missed the 2011 World Cup because he had a two year ban with steroids, unfortunately. Steroids. And he weighed in his body, it was a hair product that he used to try and create the stash. That's the way he got his story. And there's a march forward by the Japanese, and the power of the pack takes it over. Who is going to get the credit for it uh, coming out with the, uh, the ball? Hmm? It's uh, Ryu Kalani. Kalani. Oh, Kalani. Kalani. I see Kalani who gets the try. Yeah, very easy pushover try. It almost seemed that uh, the Koreans hadn't committed anybody there. So the all, and Japan almost unopposed in that. Another try So the number eight, Ryu Kolani, gets on the score sheet. Garamaro, I'm not going to say anything about his kick this time, uh, Rich. Oh, and the uh, assistant referees are happy with that one. They uh, raise the flags. Silence is a virtue, as they say. <laughs> See, I didn't say anything. He's had enough practice today. It's about time he actually got one over. Well, he converted you. Come on, give, give him a break, you know. He converted with my seven iron. <laughs> He's a great kicker. He's not Japan's all-time point scorer for nothing. It's just one of those days where I think collectively and individually things just haven't really worked for the Japan team. And it's early days. There's 12 more games to go till the World Cup. There's obviously a lot to learn on. I'm sure they'll be sitting there watching videos. Um, they've got a long flight to London on Monday because they go to England for five days to acclimatise for the World Cup. So I'm sure there'll be plenty to do on that flight in terms of... Uh, talking over today's performance and what went wrong, what went right, and how they can and build on things so when they take on Hong Kong in, in two weeks' time. But at least they're in the lead. Can you imagine going on a flight to London if you had lost? Oh, no. <laughs> the no. the inquiries, what is it, a 10 hour journey, 11 hour journey? Yeah. Oh, you were just on one recently, weren't you? I was, yeah. I think there would have been a few complaints from some of the other passengers in Japan if been on a flight after a loss. Exactly. But, uh, no, they go, they'll, they'll fly with a win under their belt, and that's important. Um, obviously, it's not been a great performance. And, and as I say, a lot of credit has to go to the Koreans. Very, very brave defensively. They've been good with they've had the ball in hand. Um, obviously, the fullback was a star in, in the first half. Lee, the scrum half, has been outstanding as well. Good run around here. Shin Kyo is in the, uh, the side. And uh, he had a great run off the uh, back of that scrum. And uh, the, here he is again, he picks it up, goes inside, and there's uh, opportunities for the Japanese to add to that uh, scoreboard. And again, Shin Kichol. Trying to block the run forward by the Japanese. And I think it was uh, Hiros got involved. Eddie has made uh, some uh, quick changes in the uh, 
the side. Here's the chance for the Goromaru got in the line. Oh, and that went over the head of the uh, flying machine. Matsui. But the uh, Japanese keeping possession as we come down to two minutes. Good rotation again. There was nearly a chance for one of the uh, forwards to go through. And here's a chance for uh, another forward to go through. And he does a somersault. And he's got another try. Justin Ives. Justin Ives is the man who's uh, who's gone in. So Justin Ives, the number six, gets a try. And Holani. Eight. was uh, also on the uh, score sheet. As I say, it hasn't been a great performance, but there have been some good things to come out of it. I mean, Justin Ives missed all of last season for Cannon Eagles. He didn't play at all. So the fact that he's still out there on the field in the 79th minute scoring a game, I mean, he's heaving a bit now. He's probably, the lungs are working overtime, but uh, that's a good sign for Japan. When you get players like that, showing that commitment. And the Goromaro sticks it straight between the uh, posts. And uh, it stretches the uh, Japanese lead out to uh, 56 points to uh, 30. So basically the uh, Korean team having uh, put the points on the board for quite some time as we come down to the uh, one minute clock. And the, uh, Koreans, I think they will be pretty happy with their performance here. They were in the lead. They shocked a lot of us in the uh, first half, taking a, a lead of 17. And there you see the uh, scoreboard there on the screen. The Koreans 30, Japan 56. And we're into the nearly a couple of last seconds to go as the uh, Japanese again take it out of the uh, fence. Good run forward again. And that is the uh, young man who came on, the number 21 for the Japanese team. This time, the ball is not forward, and uh, Tim Baker, the man in charge, decides uh, that's it. Full-time whistling goes, and it's uh, a win for Japan. My co-commentator, the man who knows Asia rugby inside out and upside down, he writes for the Toyota News every day on international rugby. Rich Freeman, you would say the Japanese would not Japan. be happy, even though the scoreboard says Japan 56, Korea 30. Yeah, I mean, they'll be happy with the win. I don't think they'll be very happy with the performance. Full credit to the Koreans. The big question mark for them, obviously, is can they carry that forward next week? We see, you know, there's still guys on the ground, but they played their hearts out today. They played really well. They, you know, deserve possibly a bonus point even for their efforts, certainly for their defence. Japan have got a lot to work on. They get a bye next week, so they don't have to play. They'll enjoy the delights of Brighton and Warwick as they sort of become acclimatised to England. Um, the weather might not be quite as good as it is here today in Incheon. But um, a, lot, a lot of good things for the Koreans. And I say, there are some good signs for the Japan team. The fitness of Justin Ives, for example. Matsui took his one chance very well. Fujita worked well coming off his wing a few times. But uh, obviously the errors weren't yep. that great. Yeah, the Koreans uh, can go away from this, uh, the uh, first game of this Asia Rugby Championship, with a lot of credit. They performed pretty well. They ran out of steam in the uh, last uh, eight or nine minutes of the first half. They've done the same here in the uh, second half. But uh, overall, I think their uh, their coach, uh, Chung Hyun Suk, would be pretty happy. I think so. And looking at the crowd, there's a standing ovation here in the main stand from the local, locals. I mean, they know that their players did well today. They performed very well. Well, the uh, teams congratulating each other as they uh, as they go down, and uh, we can now go down onto the ground where Shambur is standing beside okay, the Eddie, successful uh, coach. Eddie. New format, same result, but they made you work for it a little bit. Uh, why don't you talk us through that game? Oh, we're a bit rusty. Uh, you know, Korea to their great credit, and a lot of credits should go to Korea. They played well, very physical, tackled well. You know, and we were just sloppy, sloppy for most part of the game. So uh, what do you think about the new format and how can it help you guys uh, get ready for Rugby World Cup? Yeah, I think playing the better teams twice definitely is going to help us. And it's definitely going to help Korea and Hong Kong too in, in where they want to go. So I think the new format's excellent. Thanks a lot, Eddie. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Back to you, Colin. There's uh, Sean Moore talking there to the uh, Japanese coach, Eddie Jones, preparing to go to uh, London tomorrow for a uh, recce. And uh, as uh, Sean mentioned there, 
the Japanese team getting ready for the World Cup. I don't know what the overall, Rich Freeman, what you would think about the Japanese performance. Is it something that Scotland, the United States, and all of these other World Cup uh, opponents will be taking notice? I don't think they'll be taking too much notice of it. I think they'll probably know, as Eddie said, it was a very sloppy performance. They know Japan can play a lot better. It's still 11 more games. Right, um, here are the highlights obviously. That man oh, oh, pegging back three penalties, but in the end it was just a Japan power. Fuji to the world coming off his wing here. Yes, he, he's a man who I think any jolt at some stage gives a sort of a roving job to him. couple of others towards the end, Halani going over, Ives going over, where again it was just the Japan power and fitness came to the fore. But the one thing that the others will take notice of is that actually the Japanese team, when they're in form, they can score from all positions, so no one would turn around and say it's all about the backs. Let's take a look at the uh, highlights there, the tackles. Well, look at that, twice as many tackles the Korean made. I mean, that shows Japan had a lot of possession, but the Korea, 104 tackles, great effort, very few missed tackles as well. The scrums, 10 to eight, evened out towards the end, but that was, a lot of it was down to Japan, handling errors, again, forced by the Korean defense. Turnovers ended up equal. Um, both sides, very few kicks today, which was obviously good for the fans. They saw some running rugby. Um, Japan, as I say, will probably look to play a different style next time when they play Hong Kong. Just to go back to what you just said there about the scrums, Rich, um, the, the, the scrums situation, Eddie wouldn't be happy with that. I don't think so. I mean, as you say, when you play against South Africa or Scotland, you cannot make a mistake if you want to win. And the fact that they gave away 10 scrums means that they made basically 10 handling errors or 10 forward passes. And that is something that they're going to have to work on. The other thing today was, I mean, last year, Japan scrum, they were pushing Italy back, they were pushing the US back. They didn't really have that much domination in, in terms of pushing the, the Koreans back. Well, there's the standings of the Asia Rugby Championship in Japan and uh, Korea, the first game off, and it's uh, Japan with uh, six points. Uh, the uh, Koreans just didn't make it to uh, get a point. So um, that's the uh, first, two, uh, first game out of the way, the first two teams involved. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next game coming up when we all head to uh, Hong Kong. There you have it on your screen. It's going to be Hong Kong against Korea next Saturday at the uh, Hong Kong Football Club. The kickoff, as you see, 0800 GMT, 1600 local. A lot of people will look forward to that considering the great performance that the Koreans put up here in the uh, first half. So a good performance from them, something we'll look forward to next week. And of course, if you want to keep up to date with everything that's happening in this new Asia Rugby Championship on Facebook. You can get us on that address and the address on the Twitter as well. So you can always keep in touch with the Asia Rugby Championship for 2015. There's the uh, Twitter address for you. And uh, finally, of course, if you want to get us on the uh, YouTube, uh, you can tune in and see all the action again on YouTube. But we've had a very interesting uh, opening game here in the uh, Asia Rugby Championship. My thanks to my uh, co-commentator, Rich uh, Freeman, and uh, we, of course, will be uh, back soon to join you. But it's time now for us to uh, leave, Inchon. So from all of us here, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>